what's going on guys this is HDX here and you know something I found this an amazing article here and I am so happy and I just want to <laughs> give a round of applause to the University of Chicago for standing up for what's right by sticking to their guns and standing up for free speech and not kowtowing to safe spaces and to little so-called trigger warnings. Yes, trigger warnings means that if we say any any word or any phrase or any of our opinions, no matter how different it is, it gets them triggered. And I fucking hate that shit. I mean, why the hell would you get triggered over a word or a phrase or anybody else's has a different opinion? I mean, like, come on. I mean, stop with the trigger warning bullshit and just grow a spine or better yet, grow a bigger dick and balls and just stand up and just man the fuck freak up. I mean, just suck it up and man up. I mean, seriously, I've seen girls that have grown bigger, better, bigger spines and have bigger sets of balls than any of these flower mouth pansy motherfuckers going and whining about their little safe spaces and their little trigger warnings here. I don't know what the hell am I saying, but I digress. But anyway, without further ado, let's go to the article right here. The University of Chicago tells incoming freshmen it does not support trigger warnings or safe spaces, and I just want to... Look, I just want to applaud to to the to the University of Chicago for standing up and stick to their guns and to make sure that no, we do not condone nor endorse safe spaces or trigger warnings under any given circumstances. You're grown ass people going to college and heading into the real world. The real world is not a safe place. Let's be real about that. I want to see other schools do that as well. I mean, stick to their guns and not cow tow to these little special little snowflakes. But let's continue. The University of Chicago Class of 2020, get ready for a college experience filled with debate, discussion, and possibly discomfort as colleges across the country wrestle with a balancing academic freedom and open discourse with student and health safety. The University of Chicago Dean of Students, John Ellison, told incoming freshmen in a letter on what they said on what they should expect on campus. Sorry about that. And the letter says, quote, our commitment to academic freedom means we do not support so-called trigger warnings. We do not cancel invited speakers because their topics might prove controversial. And we do not condone the creation of intellectual safe spaces where individuals can retreat from ideas and perspectives at odds with their own, the letter said. There, and again, I applaud him. I applaud the dean in the University of Chicago for letting them know that we do not condone safe spaces, nor trigger warnings, nor special snowflakes under any given circumstance. Because let's be real, nobody is going to agree with you, special little snowflakes. Let's be real. Nobody is going to agree with you. Yes, trigger warnings used to alert students of sensitive material that might be uncomfortable, offensive, or traumatic to them, such as discussions about race and sexual assault in safe spaces designed to shelter students from a certain speakers and topics have become more common and controversial on com campuses across the country. According to a survey of more than 800 college educators by the National Coalition Against Censorship, a majority, 62%, and they and said they think trigger warnings have or will have a negative effect on academic freedom and I agree with them 100% only 17% reported favorable views of trigger warnings meaning that they have or could have a positive effect on education and classroom dynamics hey <laughs> what the fuck and while formal policies on trigger warnings are rare, fewer than 1% of respondents said the in their institution have won. 15% of STED students have requested trigger warnings in their courses, and 12% said students complain about the absence such as warnings. According to the report from the coalition of more than 50 national nonprofits supporting First Amendment principles, and they should, at the and at the University of Chicago, fostering the free exchange of ideas help build a welcoming campus, Eliasson told students in the letter, which accompanied a book titled Academic Freedom and the Modern University, the Experience of the University of Chicago by John Boyer, a university dean and professor, a uh, university spokesman said. Again, I applaud them. I applaud the University of Chicago to stand up and tell them no safe spaces, no trigger warnings allowed in this university. This is about, this is a university in America, and we need to promote free speech.
No safe spaces, you little special little snowflake. And here's the, the letter that they sent out to the students that are going to be attending University of Chicago, as you can see here. And like I said, I applaud them to let them know that there ain't going to be no safe spaces here. And I love it. You know why? Because I can't stand these special little snowflakes trying to take our freedom of speech hostage. That they try to take our freedom of speech hostage simply because they always have their panties in a wad when we say something different. That we have our own honest opinions that are different from this. Alright, so let's continue. The letter included a link to the university report issued by its Committee of Freedom of Expression established in 2015 to articulate the university's policy on free expression. It, it is not the proper role of the university to attempt to shield individuals from ideas and opinions that they find unwelcome, disagreeable, or even deeply offensive, the report states. Although the university greatly values civiliz civility and although the, all members of the university co community share in the responsibility for maintaining a climate of mutual respect, concerns about civil, civility and mutual respect that can never be used as a justification for closing off discussion of ideas. However, offensive or disagreeable those ideas may be to some members of our community. And as you can tell here, this editorial is why the University of Chicago is the University of Common Sense. And you know, every single university and college in America is supposed to be the University of Common Sense because common sense is important, people. We need that in order to be more civilized. All right, so let's continue. The university is preparing students for the real world and would not be serving them by shielding them from unpleasantness Geoffrey said Geoffrey Stone, the chair of the committee, law professor, and the past provost at the University of Chicago. The right thing to do is to empower the students, help them understand how to fight, combat, and respond, and not to insulate them from things that they will have to face later, Stone said. While the university doesn't support, require, or encourage trigger warnings, it does not prohibit them, he added. Professors are still free to alert students to certain material if they chose to do so. Jane Curdley, a media ethics and law professor at the University of Minnesota called the University of Chicago move refreshing, said colleges should resist setting limits on what views and opinions are acceptable to air in open form and should encourage students to discuss fine things that they find uncomfortable. And if universities are not providing platforms for people to be offensive, then I don't think that they're doing the part of the job. Part of their job, Curly said. If listening to Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton is going to make your blood pressure up to 400 points, then fine, don't listen to them. But that doesn't mean you can say we can't have Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton speaking on campus because it would be offensive to even know what they're talking. End quote. Another Midwesterner institution has followed the University of Chicago's lead in 2020. In 2015, the Board of Trustees at Purdue University in Indiana endorsed the principles of an articulated in the University of, Count, um, the University of Chicago report. Oh, I'm sorry that I stuttered. Our commitment to open inquiry is not new, but adopting these principles provide a clear signal of our pledge to live by this commitment and these standards, end quote. Board Chairman Todd Spongin said in a statement at the time, and you know, like I said before, I'm glad that they're sticking to their guns and stand up against this this unbelievably insane special snowflake Marxist bullshit that is going on in universities. I mean, it's going out of control. Purdue last week held a free speech panel moderated by the facility and administrators and featuring student skits as part of its orientation program to make incoming students aware of First Amendment principles and how to use their own voices to speak out against ideas they disagree with, said Steve Schultz, legal counsel for the university. We want them to be aware that they will see things on campus, be involved in situations where others are inevitably say things they may not agree with, and we want them to know that's okay, he said. End quote. And they should. You want to know why? Because they need it. Because it's common sense to like, you know what, if you don't like what they say, I mean, do not agree with it. I mean, don't be bothered by it 100%.
The debate over freedom of expression and safe spaces has played out at other universities in the Chicago area and across the country. Earlier this month, DePaul University denied a request to have conservative commentator Ben Shapiro to, have, to give a free speech at the university, citing security concerns after his talks had sparked protests at other campuses. And in May, a protest disrupted and forced to have cancellation of an appearance by Milo Yiannopoulos, a conservative blogger with Bray Bart News Network. In a statement to the Tribune after the Shapiro's cancellation, DePaul spokeswoman Carol Hughes said DePaul's University Office of the Public Safety determined, after observing events which took place when Mr. Shapiro spoke elsewhere, that is not in a position where to provide the type of security that would be required to properly host this venue at this time. In other words, I assume that the protest went too out of control and then Shapiro had to ban him because, like they said, security is in security reasons either way it's kind of been lousy on DePaul University's behalf and like I said at the beginning of the video I applaud the University of Chicago for standing up against this this bullshit I am triggered SJW special snowflake bullshit that it's going around in universities as of late I'm talking about these these goddamn special little snowflake college students that go out of their way and throw temper tantrums and screaming whatever fucking bullshit whenever there's a seminar, whenever there's a meeting, whenever there's a lecture that that has been spoken by people that give their own honest opinions by using their free speech and then every time that happens, anybody whoever is a, a third wave feminazi or or a Black Lives Matter student or any other special little snowflake comes in and they just disrupt like a motherfucker and go out of their way by spewing whatever fucking bullshit that they spew and then when we called them out we've been called out oh you're a sexist you're a racist you're a bigot you're this and that like get the fuck out of here with this fucking bullshit now listen i am not a conservative nor a liberal i am not a leftist or a rightist i am not a democrat nor a republican i am the side of common sense and there has to be a balance to it but i'm gonna save that for another video point being i am just sick and tired of these special little snowflakes that demand to have trigger warnings and safe spaces simply because they don't want to hear differentiating opinions that that don't fit their narrative that don't fit within their ideology that they're in that don't fit their rhetoric and it, it makes them bitter it makes them so uneasy i'm like just just listen, I am just sick and tired of this fucking bullshit that they've been spewing over and over and over and over again. I mean, whatever what happened in Mizul, whatever happened in Yale, whatever happened in in the University of California, no, 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 not it. Or whatever happened in UCLA, whatever happened in UMass during the triggering, and like they go up there and they go into these meetings and they just disrupt like a motherfucker and. It just blows my fucking mind. It boggles my fucking mind that, like, that they can't stand opinions that they don't like. And I am going to quote what Steven Crowder said. Look, they're not fighting for rights. They're not fighting for free speech. They're fighting for the right to be a pussy and not hear opinions that they don't like. All right. That was a bit of a rant. I mean, that's all I got to say about these little fuckers. I mean, there's just so much fucker going on when it comes to them, and I just can't freaking take it anymore. All right, it's time for me to wrap up this video by saying give this video a thumbs up. Leave, leave some comments down below. Tell me what you think about this issue, and subscribe to my channel. All right, this is HGX signing out. Have a good one.